So E3 has come round again and the big news on everyone's mind, even graphics card carrying members of the PC gaming master race like myself, is Sony vs Microsoft. After their respective console announcements earlier in the year, Microsoft have been on the defensive, accused of holding games prisoner, spying on its customers for the NSA and generally trampling all over people's consumer rights. Sony, meanwhile, has been held up as a hero of the downtrodden gaming masses, letting them share their games as they've always done, and championing interactive entertainment over old, passive, boring ones like TV. But is it as clear-cut as all that, or are we being asked to choose between Orwell's 1984 and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World? Microsoft opened their conference with a trailer for Metal Gear Red Dead Phantom Ground Afghanistan, a gorgeous looking game that appears to bring some genuine innovation and novelty to the Metal Gear franchise, yet still soaked in more pretentiousness than an Apple employee in a reservoir full of fair trade coffee. A trailer so far up its own arse, it could pull itself inside out by its own tonsils, with the usual pompous dialogue and cast of circus freaks you expect from a Kojima game. It does, however, feature popular children's book character Skullduggery Pleasant in his first ever video game role. Microsoft's Don Matrick was keen to stress that this event would be all about the games, and to Microsoft's credit, they showed a hell of a lot more than they did back in May. Hardly one of the 12 labours of Hercules, I know, but at least they tried, bless them. We were offered the likes of World of Tanks, touted as an Xbox 360 exclusive and completely free to play. Ignoring the fact it's been on PC for years and you still need an Xbox Live Gold subscription to actually play it. The charming Pixar-esque Max the Curse of Brotherhood, an XBLA title, and masochistic core gamer e-penis yardstick Dark Souls 2, also coming to PC and PS3. But what of actual Xbox One titles, the killer apps, the system sellers, games so fantastic you'll want to surrender the very concept of ownership, be willingly treated like a criminal and have an unseen mechanised eye scrutinise you 24-7. We got Rise, aka God of Rome Total War, where every fight is done through QTEs. Remember those kids? Sunset Overdrive, a bastard child of Mirror's Edge and Jet Set Radio, wowed audiences with, among other things, colours. While a man with the world's scariest eyes told us about Forza 5. Minecraft on Xbox One, just so you can pay for it all over again. Hat Films made a very nice trailer for it though, so kudos to them. There was even some actual in-game cutscene footage for Quantum Break presented by Sam Lake of Remedy. I shut down the sarcasm areas of my brain and refused to say anything snarky at this part because I genuinely love Remedy's stuff and because only an idiot would piss off Max Payne. Speaking of people I love, Swery 65s new game D4 is also an Xbox One exclusive and that's a damn shame because by fuck it looks gloriously weird. And even my cold dead heart twitched a little when I saw Project Spark. Microsoft's answer to Little Big Planet 2, designed to show off its new smart glass technology. And who couldn't be excited by an all new Killer Instinct? Just let it happen, it'll be over soon. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Just let it happen, it'll be over soon. Come again? Just let it happen, it'll be over soon. Did he really just. Just let it happen, it'll be over soon. To a woman? Just let it happen, it'll be over soon. Incidentally, that's also Microsoft's new tagline for its always on DRM system, of which no mention was made whatso fucking ever. After this, we got to see footage of Crimson Dragon from the creators of Panzer Dragoon, which showed off the aerial combat to the sound of John Cage's 433, a fact that sadly flew over most people's heads. I'd love to show you more of Crimson Dragon, but. I don't want a music copyright strike on my YouTube account. For Dead Rising 3, Capcom worked hard to isolate everything that made the Dead Rising franchise so memorable and fun, then chucked it all in a fucking bin and threw brown paint over what was left. Titanfall from Respawn Entertainment looked highly enjoyable with its blend of futuristic soldiery and giant robots. I might get it on PC, which is also coming too. I could even buy it on my 360 because guess what, it's also coming to that. Meanwhile, I still don't give two flecks of a turn about Battlefield 4. There was however one video that got me very excited. It looked new, original, fresh, exciting. But what could it be? Oh, this looks interesting. Is this some gritty reimagining of Journey? What's this giant metal thing? What's this planet? What's going on? I'm curious. Who is this mysterious cloaked hooded figure? Where does he come from? Who are his people? These are the things I need to know. I'll piss off. Fucking master, fucking chief. <laughs> Ha 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 
So in conclusion, we got shown a whole bunch of games that we weren't shown at the actual unveiling ceremony, but it's a start, I suppose. Only a handful of them are exclusive to Microsoft's new console, however, and if you want to play them, well... You've got to wait through all this anti-consumer bullshit. The Kinect sensor will still scrutinise you like the lidless, tireless, unyielding eye of Sauron. You can try and plead with it to only watch you at certain times, but it's still going to be there. You can't pluck it out and cast it into the fires of Mount Doom. At least not without turning your $499 all-in-one entertainment hub into a $499 useless plastic brick. In addition to this, you still have to connect to Microsoft servers every 24 hours, or every hour if you've borrowed a game from a friend, and yes, that also includes single-player games. If you want to sell one of these games, you'll only be able to do it through approved retailers. Forget going to an independent retailer for a better deal, they'll be squeezed out by the likes of GameStop and other similar outlets. Coincidentally, the same outlets regularly blame for killing the games industry with used game sales. The very used game sales these measures are supposed to stop. Don't think you can simply give your games away either. You can only do that to people who've been on your Xbox friends list for at least 30 days. It doesn't matter whether you've known them all your life, or you just found them shooting heroin into their bollocks in a dingy back alley yesterday. If they've not been on your list for 30 days, they may as well not exist. On the plus side, you can condemn your friends to perpetual ownership of absolutely terrible games, because once you've given or traded a game to someone on your friends list, they will never, ever, ever be able to sell or even give that game away to anyone else. If in spite of all these restrictions and limitations you still want to buy an Xbox One, then more power to you. At the end of the day, it's your choice and your money. Just make sure you also have a reliable internet connection with a minimum speed of 1.5 megabits per second. And if you don't, well, Don Matrix is just the solution for you. Fortunately, we have a product for people who aren't able to get some form of connectivity. It's called Xbox 360.